one of the things that I found interesting about how Teachers Connect has changed since I started um, visiting the site is now it's actually a lot more. Good morning, here is today's outfit. I have a training today, so I'm dressed very casually. I'm wearing my Hudson jeans that I got from Nordstrom Rack. I'm wearing this clueless shirt from Target because this was one of my favorite movies back in the day. I am wearing my necklace that says LaTanya. This gold and white, I think this is a Michael Kors watch, excuse me. And then my white Birkenstocks. So I probably will talk to you guys on the way to my training. I am on my way to meet my friend Stephanie from my previous school and we are going to go to this training together it's about five minutes from where my old school was but neither one of us are exactly sure where to go and um, I haven't seen her in a while and so I just thought it'd be fun if we got there together and hopefully we can finagle a way to sit together since I don't get to see her that often um, but it's my people it's Monday morning and um, I'm feeling better than I did on Friday. A lot of it is thanks to you guys and just the nice comments that you guys have left so far and just knowing that I'm not the only one that had either a bad day or a bad week or just had the, have these feelings of frustration because things are not going exactly the way that I want them to go. Um, so that's good. I after I talked to you guys on Friday, I pretty much rested the rest of the evening. Didn't do much. Saturday, I edited the vlog so that that was ready to go. But then I didn't really do a lot of work after that. And then Sunday, I think I had a good mix of getting a little bit of work done and relaxing. I had a massage yesterday, a massage and beat. So I, that was nice. So it's a new week. I'm going to this training. I'm very optimistic about it. I've actually been through the training before. I'm assuming it's gonna be very similar to the um, cultural proficiency training I went to last school year um, because that was for principals and I was able to attend because I asked if I could go as a teacher because it was something I was very interested in and I was lucky enough that they had an extra spot and they said yes. So some of it may be a repeat, but I don't mind because this is a topic that I'm very interested in and so that's good and it, it will be there. I, I will be there, sorry, with people from my previous school so it will be nice to see them as well. The rest of the schools in my district have like a traditional day-to-day -day, which for us means we're looking at um, scores from the first iReady test since we've already reviewed CAST scores and then a lot of times just talking as a staff and then eventually as a grade level team as to what our plans are or what our goals are based on the data that we you know collected from iReady so since my school and two other schools have signed up for the first round of this very specific cultural proficiency training we won't be discussing data we've already done that at a staff meeting we're going to be trained on just making sure we're culturally proficient teachers and truth be told this training kind of came out of well, not even kind of this training came out of meetings with the APEC group which is that african-american parent group that I'm a part of and so a lot of the conversation <clears throat> from this training at least when I went the first time was geared towards african-american students um, although the information that's presented is helpful for dealing with any population that's considered to be a minority group it was specifically geared towards African-American students because that is the population that has the largest gap in achievement when compared to white counterparts or non-minority counterparts. And it's not just our district. It is like statewide and I believe nationwide. So it's a definite, it's a definite problem. And one of the most interesting pieces of information, and I want to make sure that I say it correctly. Um, when you look at African-American students, and especially in our district, which is a high-performing district um, in general, even in a very high-performing district, there is a significant discrepancy between the performance of African-American students and any other, um, I don't like using the word subgroup, any other 
minority group or group that is not considered to just be white with you know not special ed or not language learners things like that and I believe in some cases that even the poorest white students are still able to outperform black students who are not considered to be economically disadvantaged which every time I hear that it's just like shocking to me because the question is how is that even happening so this training and this company that we're working with is really geared towards closing the achievement gap and looking at it from a sense of as teachers are we really putting forth proper effort to communicate with our students in a way that is effective to, to them taking into account their backgrounds and their life experiences because all of those things do play into whether or not a student is able to learn well whether or not a student is com comfortable excuse me and then able to learn in your classroom so obviously that's something I'm very interested in because that's a big piece of why I went into teaching uh, I know I've said it numerous times before but I know there's some of you that are new to my channel but um, <clears throat> minority education was really the driving force in me deciding to teach I did not grow up thinking I was gonna be a teacher I grew up thinking I was going to be a lawyer or something along those lines um, but I did want, you know, to just kind of be an example out there for other students of color so that they could see someone that looks like them and all of that. So I'm excited for the training. I'm running a few minutes late. I need to uh, voice text Stephanie that I'm on my way. But yeah, but um, I do want to say thank you to everyone for the words of encouragement and support about last week it really did help it's a new week those of you that had a rough week just like I did we are going to have a better week this week it has to get better it won't be like this every day um, but I just want to say thank you and I probably won't check in with you until much later in the day because I'm in training so I will talk to you guys then hey guys I look a mess because it was scorching hot today and when I got home from training I just needed to get more comfortable. I had to pull my hair back, put on a tank top because it was that hot. So my apologies. Um, it is probably close to five. The training ended at three. Um, and of course for me, I enjoyed the training. Like I said this morning, I really enjoyed that topic and talking about it. And it's not just that I enjoy it. I just think it's extremely important. It's something that needs to be talked about a lot more than what it is. And so, a, a, you know, a good portion of the training was a repeat for me but I didn't mind it and plus I got to spend time with my friends from my previous school and that was that's always refreshing for me so um, I got home probably about a quarter to four because afterwards I was talking to my friends for a while and I am here in my living room obviously I just finished checking comments from um, this past weekend's blog and responding to that and now I'm getting ready to sit down and kind of look at some lesson plans for the week and I just it the weird thing is is I just have all this anxiety about going back to work tomorrow and it is very bizarre because I've been teaching a long time and it's not the first day of school I, I don't I think what it is is I left the classroom Friday feeling so unbelievably frustrated with just myself and like the day that I'm scared that I'm going to go to work tomorrow and feel that way again and I just don't want to feel that way again and I think so I have all this anxiety about that happening again and um I can't think of a time where I felt that way before where I had a really rough day and it affected me so much that I was anxious about going back to work the following day so I'm looking at my camera and I see that my battery is about to die, but I just wanted to check in and like finish up for the day. The training went great. Um, we have another one in October and I think this training now we're grouped by grade levels. Um, so I won't necessarily see all my friends from my previous school except for the ones that teach the same grade as me, which is great because I still get to see some of them. But um, yeah, I'm gonna try and just sit down and map out my week. I'm partially planned because things got carried over and I'm just gonna have to do a lot of positive self-talk. I'm gonna have to shake last week off and cut myself some slack like some of you have said and know that I'm not alone and that other teachers are out there feeling this way and just kind of wake up tomorrow and just say, we're gonna go in there, we're gonna get it done and see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, 
by for today. Um, maybe I'll take some footage when I take Genesis out on a walk because I don't think she showed up last week and you guys love her so. And um, But if not, um, I'll definitely see you guys tomorrow. Pray for me if you're a praying person. Send positive vibes out into the universe if that's what you do. Um, rub a stone if you rub stone. That sounds, uh, <laughs> whatever it is that you do to send someone positivity, please do that for me because I just cannot have another day like Friday. So I'm gonna get planning and I'll talk to you guys later. Good morning. Good morning, here's today's outfit. Today I'm wearing a white shirt, some blue jeans, and a red necklace in honor of Patriot Day or remembrance of September 11th. I'm wearing um, these tan wedge sandals from DSW that I got over the summer. And I'm wearing this gold and white Michael Kors watch. And that's pretty much it. So I will talk to you guys later on today. Okay, hi guys, it's five o'clock. Um, this little clip is probably gonna be short because I need to leave. Cause I'm meeting some friends for happy hour and I need to get going, but, and also excuse my hair. I'm not sure what my hair is doing. It's making independent decisions and I tried to fix it for you guys, but I couldn't. So as far as my day, I'm sure you guys are wondering, I left here last week feeling very concerned and frustrated with myself as a teacher and then yesterday I had training but I had this anxiety about coming back today because I was just so frustrated at the end of the day on Friday and I'm happy to report that today went today went much much better um it just it it did I think partially because my schedule is the way that I need it to be right now and I'm just trying to stay optimistic about the day and just trying to be a little bit more explicit with some of my kids. My student that's like a, one of my more challenging students in terms of behavior, he is on a sticker chart system and one of the things I thought of over the weekend to try and make things better is just really breaking down his days and very isolated periods of time. So instead of making the, the time stretches longer or bigger, I literally had to tell him, okay, I will give you a sticker on your sticker chart during the course of recess as long as you behave well. And recess includes you lining up, you walking from the classroom to the playground without any incidents, you being on the playground without any incidents, and then lining up and getting back to the class. And breaking it down in smaller chunks like that seemed to help. So he earned two stickers today, which is pretty good for him. I do have someone, um, a school psychologist that we're gonna have come in and do some observations on Thursday so that he can kind of give me some tips. The principal came in this morning and spoke to my class as a collective, but also indicated that she knew that there were some boys in particular that were having a hard time outside. And she let them know that should something like that happen again, that you know she's given me full permission and has asked me to just send them straight to the office. So hopefully that helps with that. So that went well, we got everything done. Um, in order to make my day better, what I had to do is, ha I had to have a moment yesterday where I just had to be realistic about what I was gonna be able to accomplish this week. And so for me, that meant I had to just kind of abandon this particular theme of wonders, which is terrible for you guys, cause you're not getting to see a full, um, stretch of a whole theme with wonders but never fear because it will happen again probably starting next week but just because this is a short week and the writing section really takes some time i decided okay the reality is i'm not going to be able to pull my groups for this theme the way that i would like to and get the writing done so i'm just going to make sure the kids are comfortable with the comprehension skill and the vocabulary skill and then instead of giving them the regular weekly assessment which is more challenging, I'm going to give everyone the approaching weekly assessment, which still covers the same 
comprehension skill and vocabulary skill. It's just a little less intense in, in terms of the rigor of the test and there is no writing portion to that. So I'm gonna do that and I feel okay about it because it is the first time they're taking it on their own. So that's one way to ease them into that. And then that freed up some time for me to finish the things that I so desperately wanted to get done on Friday, but couldn't. So before I show you one of the things, I want you to know that there's a portion of this project that did not come out the way that I wanted and I contemplated not hanging these up because it just, it just doesn't look exactly the way that it's supposed to. And I'm going to let you see and see for yourself and I'm sure you'll eventually figure out what it is that caused me a little concern. And if you don't, great, maybe it's all in my mind, but I'm certainly not going to say what it is on camera. Um, so we did the bubblegum activity on Friday and then I made this picture graph in collaboration with my class. So I hung it up here and then this was the craft part of it. So these are faces that they all made for themselves, of themselves I should say. And then I had a parent volunteer blow up some pink balloons for me so that they would look like bubblegum, bubbles being blown and I just, let's say I wanted them to come out a little bit more round than they did, but um, live and learn. There's a, obviously a technique that we need to employ so as to guarantee that the balloons come out more rounded than they did for me this time around. So um, I think it's cute. Like it's cute. It's reflective of them. They made their hair. They chose their skin color and all of that. So we got that done and then um, we talked about growth mindset. This is what I wanted to do. So this is just the brain that I'm sure you all have seen. And then I think I got this as a free resource on Teachers Pay Teachers. I can't remember. I'll try and remember to look it up and add it to the description box. But this is just the image of the brain. And then there was a growth mindset sort. And so we watched a video that just kind of explained what growth mindset was and the Everybody Can Learn video from Khan Academy. I will also try and link both of those. And then we sorted some statements into fixed mindset statements and growth mindset statements. And then I had them color the brain and make sure that they knew that we never want to be in a fixed mindset. So we don't want that to be very colorful and enticing to the eye. So they just knew that they needed to trace that um, in gray or black. And then the other side, they made it colorful to show that we want to try and be in a fixed mindset as often as possible. And I did talk about how all of us at some point are going to find ourselves in situations where we are in a fixed mindset. And it's not to say that we never will be, but we got to work to get ourselves out of that. So we did that today. We also talked very, a little bit about 9-11. I showed a brain pop video that I've shown, I think for the past few years that does a good job of explaining it enough without getting into a lot of detail. And then I read this book, which is called September the 12th. I've also had this for years. Um, and I like this book because it doesn't necessarily, again, focus on like the tragic events of the day, which is not really something you wanna get too deep in with kids this age, but it talks about the day after and how this first grade class that wrote this book knew that everything was going to be okay and I asked the kids you know what is the message of this book or what is it that these first graders wanted to teach us and they they got it they said that they want us to know that the world was not over and that the sun is still going to shine and good things can happen still even though that was a sad sad um, situation so we got everything done. I definitely had a much better day. I'm feeling better. I actually pulled a guided reading group for the first time today and um, that went well. So I can't complain. Much better day today than it was on Friday. So that's all I wanted and that's exactly what I got. So I'm happy about that. But I am off to happy hour now. Um, I doubt that I'll record, but you never know. Maybe I'll surprise myself and I'll surprise you, but I will definitely be seeing you guys tomorrow. So I'll talk to you soon. Good morning, here's today's outfit. Today I'm wearing an old dress from Charming Charlie. It's a couple years old. I'm wearing these black sandals from Nordstrom Rack that I got over the summer. And then just the black Marc Jacobs watch and a rubber band on my wrist. Um, so that is it. I'll talk to you guys when I get to school at some point. Hello guys, it is 4.31 and guess what? 
I think I'm gonna be going home in a few minutes, actually after I finish chatting with you guys. Um, I apologize, I did not vlog at all yesterday. I had every intention to. I did take an outfit of the day, which I will show you right now. Good morning, here's today's outfit. Today I am wearing a top from Old Navy that I got over the summer. I am wearing some navy blue pants from Kohl's and then I'm wearing these black flats from DSW and as far as accessories, just a silver fossil watch. Um, my bracelet from Goriana, which was from Nordstrom as well as a ring from the same line. So <laughs> I will talk to you guys later. And then I meant to vlog at school after school, but then I got busy and then I was like, okay, I'll just vlog from home and kind of share some things from there. And I totally forgot. So here we are Friday, um, 4.30, I'm getting ready to go home. But I thought I would check in with you guys and I would like to happily report that I have had a much more positive day today. I don't know exactly what it's attributed to. The class was much calmer today. Um, some things that we've been working on got a little bit better. One second, Liza's calling. Hello? How was your day today? Well, I was just vlogging about it. You're actually on audio on the vlog right now. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi, hi guys. How are you? <laughs> I do my daily check in to make sure Miss Robinson's not going bananas. No, I'm not going bananas, but... Okay, sorry, I had to catch up with Liza all as well. She's just every day we really, as happy as she is where she's at, and as happy as I am to have a fresh start with a new team, oh, we just really miss working with each other and being together every single day. And I know some of you guys miss that as well. Trust us, we miss it just as much as you do, if not more. So we were just catching up, even though I saw her this morning when I worked out. So um, I can't remember what I was saying. I think I was just saying that I had a really good day. Um, it showed a lot of promise. My kids were a lot more calm and I started to think like, okay, maybe we are now getting to the place where my class is getting into some kind of a rhythm or understanding like the flow of this classroom and my expectations and what I need and what I want and being much more responsive. Um, so that was great and I'm happy for that. Um, there's a couple of things I wanted to show you. I showed you this project earlier this week with the bubble gum and I just was not very comfortable with the, uh, the, the bubble gum as it was earlier. So I couldn't take it anymore. So I got some more balloons and blew them up again. And now I think it looks much better much more rounded. This is what I was looking for. Um, so I have a couple kids I need to put up, but I like it. I would definitely do this again next year. I might next year just um, create the sequencing chart and maybe have that hanging up. Or I even thought about, since this is my writing wall, I could have asked them to write like a quick story using sequencing and somehow incorporate someone blowing a bubble with bubble gum in it. But that didn't come, come to me until after the fact. So there's that. The other thing I wanted to show you that I'm really excited about is I was really trying to prevent myself from buying these bins because I felt like it was one of those things that I saw on Instagram and suddenly felt like I needed them because everybody was getting them. But I bought them because the binders out on the floor and on the desk was driving me crazy and it made me feel disorganized when I came in the room and when I left the room. So I got these from Walmart. I will try and remember the, to link them in the description box they came in packs of six i can't remember how much each pack was but um i i was really kind of sad to kind of spend the money but i'm glad i did so this looks much much better so i have 26 bins i have some more in the pod because i ended up ordering like 30 or something yeah five six or five sets of six so in the binder i'm going to show you one that i think i can show um here we go. So this is Brendan's folder. That's Jenny's son. So I'm keeping Beezus and Ramona in this bin. That's what we're reading right now. This is the notebook we use when we take notes for wonders. They're your turn book um, because this doesn't fit in their desk because the, tr the triangular desk are limited in space and their resource folder. And then I decided to also store one mouse in the bin for them because we were keeping them in a bucket and the cords were getting tangled and that was driving me crazy. So I wanted to share that with you. 
And I wanted to give you an update on wonders and I just realized I shut down my computer so I can't show you what I'm talking about, but I'll try to remember tomorrow. So basically, um, I need to just end this thing because we've got to move on. And so I'm giving them the approaching test. The approaching test does not have the writing portion on it. But what I did to just kind of give myself the peace of mind of knowing the kids understood the comprehension skill and the vocabulary skill is I assigned some online activities to my class, gave them a due date, which was today. And then I went on the data dashboard portion of the Connect Ed site to see how they performed to check my class average. So I did that. And then yesterday when I checked, there were six students that scored 60% or less than 70% on those activities. So then this morning I pulled them to the back, let them know, you know, I checked your scores on the comprehension skill for this week. You scored less than 70%. So we're going to review the skill. So we did a couple of activities together. And then I just reminded them that this is um, what you're going to be focusing on when you take your assessment this week. These are the clue words you want to help use you for help you. These are the clue words you want to use to help you sequence a story. And then I sent them on their way. The only hang up is the vocabulary activities I assign. I'm not 100% sure if it's the right thing to assign. It says um, vocabulary skill words in context, but it looks more like the vocabulary words that go with the story. So I'm not 100% sure about that. So they're gonna take the approaching test tomorrow. So if you ever find yourself in a bind where your learning block with wonders is taking longer than what you expected, or you've gotta move on for whatever reason, that's always an option. And I have to remind myself of that. Like sometimes you just have to be realistic and know that it's not gonna go exactly the way you planned it just because of the time constraints and you just gotta keep it moving sometimes. So there's that. And then this one I wanted to share specifically because we had cultural proficiency training on Monday. That's what the teachers were doing while the, the students were out of school. And I love the training, but the one thing that I had a question about is um, I work in a pretty conservative district. And as a part of this training, they're not only talking about cultural proficiency in terms of like race and ethnicity, but it also in terms of like family dynamics and how families can be different, gender issues and things like that. So one of my questions is how do we include that in our classroom when we teach in a pretty um, conservative district. You don't necessarily, this lighting is terrible. You don't necessarily want to do or cover something in your classroom that could be putting you at risk with your job. And so you want to be careful, but at the same time, you're trying to honor the different kids and the different backgrounds that are in your class. There have been a couple of books that I've seen on Instagram and in Target that I want to buy that I haven't because I felt like they would be a little bit too risque or I could be called into the principal's office for reading it. So the other day on September the 11th also was like National Grandparents Day, I think it is. And so since September the 11th is September the 11th, I always read this book because I think that's more important at the time. But then the next day I always read this book, which is called Silas, Silas's Seven Grandparents. This kind of helps me address the ideas that families can be different without getting too into any real detail about um, gender issues, divorce, family dynamics, because it really is very innocently about this little boy named Silas. He has a total of seven grandparents and they're all vying for his attention and they want him to come visit. And he's just having the hardest time deciding whose house he's gonna go to while his parents are away. But he also repeatedly says that he's so lucky to have seven grandparents because he says something like he's loved seven times more. Um, let me see. Where is it? Oh, so in this on this page, he's going to bed, and it says, and wrapped in a glittering hug from his head to his toes, Silas felt especially loved times seven. So I always read this, and at the end, 
I always ask the kids, how can someone end up with seven grandparents? How does that even happen? So they typically can tell you, well, maybe your parents got divorced. Um, sometimes I'll say, well, maybe one of your parents passed away. Um, maybe your parents are remarried. Maybe you have pretend grandparents and things like that. So we talk about it. And so I know I said yesterday, you know, sometimes kids whose parents are divorced will feel kind of self-conscious because instead of having just one set of parents, maybe they have two sets of parents parents and they feel a little embarrassed because their friends don't have two sets of parents so I said now we've learned that instead of feeling embarrassed you should feel lucky because you're loved that much more so this is a book that I think is good to have if you just want to be able to um infuse the idea that families come in different shapes and sizes in your classroom without being overly political without like really stepping on anyone's toes in terms of talking too much about gender issues or family dynamics or gay and lesbian families and all of that. But I'm really hoping that we do get to a place as teachers where we don't have that fear of reading a picture book that might be a little bit political for lack of better term. But to me, it's not even really political. It's just the reality of society without feeling like your job could be at risk or something like that. So that's what I wanted to share. I need to go home. I don't have to cook today. I'm going to go home and I'm actually going to work and just try and wrap my mind around pressing forward with math groups. Right now, the progress is we have been practicing the at your seat rotation and I have been watching the Insta stories that um, Lauren Santos has put on Instagram. So we've practiced the at your seat rotation and the technology rotation. That's about as far as we've gotten. I've introduced their math triads, which are groups of three that have been purposefully put together and they use each other as a resource so that when we get to the point where I'm actually working at the back table with the group, they know not to come to me. They have a group of three to work with. So we've practiced that for a couple of days. If I can find a way to show that, I will, but of course there's kids involved, so I don't know how much of that I can share, but at the end of the day, I had a much better day today, and I hope this is like us headed in the right direction. My student that's very active and has some behavior issues has been doing much better with his sticker chart. Um, no cover his name so here's his sticker chart and for every segment of time that he does well we put a sticker on it and he's trying to get to the very end there and when he does he will take this up to rsp and she will give him some kind of reward he had a couple moments today where he didn't earn a sticker once was at lunch and i think after lunch just kind of making poor choices and then we had someone come and observe today just him in like a whole group setting as well as a small group setting so I'm curious to see what the school psychologist has to say so but he is doing better so that's good news but and the eight that works with him in a small group was amazed at how much better he was today and she created this thing I've never seen this before but if you have a student and they are struggling with writing to the point where it's legible like maybe it's oversized or something like that she created this out of an index card and it just he uses it as a guide so it's he has to stay within these margins and she said this has worked wonders for her i've never seen this before i don't know if you guys have seen it or if it has a name but she said that has helped quite a bit so i'm getting ready to go home I'm gonna enjoy getting home before six o'clock. My apologies if you like my skin and my forehead is shining like crazy, but it is what it is. So, good day, I will see you tomorrow. Fingers crossed that tomorrow is just as positive as today was, and I will talk to you then. Good morning, here's my outfit. It's Friday, so it's just gonna be jeans and a school shirt. I am wearing these gray sandals from Nordstrom that you guys have seen before, and I am wearing a two-tone Michael Kors watch and this rubber band on my wrist again because I always pull my hair back at the end of the day. Um, that is it. I will talk to you guys later on.
Hey guys, it is about 4.15. I am wrapping up for the day. I just finished labeling the um, storage boxes that I ordered from Walmart. So it's official, I'm going to be keeping them. They worked out pretty well. We used them today, I liked it. So I just used these labels, I'm gonna zoom in. Um, there they are. They match the name tags on my desk and they are from the same company, or not company, the same Teachers Pay Teachers site that I have um, ordered the math rotation from, Core Inspiration. The teacher's name is Lauren Santos. Um, so that is done, I feel better. The kids now know what to go, what goes in there. I talked to them today and told them they will never be going into those buckets without me directing them to go in there just so that they know it's not just a free for all where they're just putting any and everything that they want in there. And they do know that I expect them to look like that at the end of every day. A friend of mine at work today or this morning asked me, how do you get your kids to keep things so neat? And quite honestly, I just tell them flat out that I'm, I like things to be neat. There's tape all over the place. I like things to be neat and I expect them to keep the classroom neat because it's their classroom. And I even say, I'm not going to be cleaning up after you guys because you're old enough to clean up after yourselves. So if a student puts something away and it's not the way it should be put away, I will let them know and I will have them redo it. And I do that with pretty much everything. If they turn in a piece of paper the wrong way, I'll call them back and say, you need to turn in your paper the right way and fix the pile or whatever the case may be. So um, I wanted to check in before I left. I will be checking in again tonight because we gotta do our Teachers Connect chit chat, but there were two things I wanted to share. Number one is I wanted to share this book that I wrote in my class for Growth Mindset. So I'm sure you have all seen this book. Truth Be Told, let me zoom back out. Truth Be Told, I was supposed to read this book, Everyone Can Learn to Ride a Bike, but I panicked because I could not find this book. Luckily I found it. I, I had stashed it in a cabinet somewhere with some other books that I totally forgot about. Um, so I ended up reading this book instead because I thought this one was also good for the beginning stages of talking to your kids about growth mindset. This is our model for the month, Everyone Can Learn, which is from that um, Growth Mindset Guide for Teachers book. So I read the book after the fall, which pretty much tells kids or gives a story of what happened to Humpty Dumpty after he fell. And in the beginning of the story, he has what would be considered a fixed mindset. He basically decides he's never gonna get back up on that wall again, but then realizes by not doing that, he's missing out on watching the birds, which is something he really enjoys to do. And then he transitions to a growth mindset and then he decides to um, get back up there long story short and so the kids really liked it i had them recite the humpty dumpty rhyme beforehand and that kind of got them into it and um i think they just enjoyed hearing what happened to humpty dumpty after he fell off the wall so i did that with growth mindset and then i also um i can't show it to you but i will fingers crossed, remember to put it in the description box. Showed them a video of this little boy. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it because I came across it on Facebook. And it's a little boy, some people think it's a little girl, but I was reading the comments and I guess it's actually a little boy who is repeatedly trying to jump on this box, kind of like a CrossFit box where you're trying to jump up onto it. And he misses quite a few times, falls down, and then eventually, it's either his dad or a coach or someone, I just assume it's his dad, says something to him. I don't know what he said because it's in another language, but you know it's like words of encouragement just based on the body language. And then after that, the little boy stands in front of the box, takes a deep breath, and then is able to get on top of the box or jump on top of it. So I asked my class to explain how that was an example of a growth mindset. And they were able to say he fell down repeatedly, but he kept trying and then he was eventually able to do it. Then I asked them, um, what do you think the dad or the coach was saying to him just before he was able to jump on that box? And he, and they said, you know, he was probably telling him, you can do it, keep trying. Um, so that was good. And then I even asked them, when the little boy stops and takes a pause before he jumps up on that box, what do you think he was saying to himself? What do you think he was thinking about? And they were good about saying, he was probably saying, let me just take a deep breath, let me try again, I can do this, I got this. And then I asked them, okay, how can we take what that little boy did with trying to get on top of that box and apply it in the classroom or to our learning? And um, 
one of the little girls said, well, like maybe when we're taking a test or a quiz, we can just take a deep breath and tell ourselves we can do it. And I thought that was great. So it was pretty casual. I, we just really are having conversations about it. Nothing too involved, nothing too long. So I wanted to share that with you and that book with you because I really liked it. And then, um, they took their wonders assessment today, but again, I only gave them the approaching test, so there was no writing portion. But we are gonna do the writing prompt that I came up with where we compared the first story that we read was that was called The Dreamcatcher, and the second story that we read that was called Yoon and the Jade Bracelet. So here's the prompt that I came up with, and it was written to mimic the one that was on the test um, on the weekly, excuse me, you guys, <laughs> on the weekly assessment had I given it. So the prompt I came up with said, both the stories, Dreamcatcher and Yoon and the Jade Bracelet, are told through a series of events. Give details from the story to show how the characters change over time. I definitely asked them if they knew what series of events meant. Most of them did not, so I explained um, that that's basically saying the story is told after multiple, th or through multiple things happening. We tapped the prompt, they had a hard time telling me what the topic was. They were saying things like, oh, we're supposed to describe what happens in the two stories. And anytime they told me something that was not truly the topic, I asked them to identify where in the prompt is it telling you to, to, to do that. Um, but we eventually got to the point where they understood the topic is writing about the characters Yoon and Peter and how they change over time. They know that the audience is me, so the writing needs to be formal. And then we were able to discover that this is informational writing. We're gonna be giving some information. So then I had them take out both their reading and writing workshop book and their literature anthology because that's where these stories are located. We broke down the stories by beginning, middle, and end. And so I would have the groups discuss for a couple of minutes how was Peter, the main character in the beginning of the story, make, told them they had to make sure they had text evidence. How was the character in the middle of the story with text evidence? How is he at the end with text evidence? And then we did the same thing. Yoon in the beginning, Yoon in the middle, and Yoon in the end. And I felt so good today. I'm having a much better Friday than, that, than I did last Friday because we are starting to get to the point where the kids are enjoying coming up with their own thoughts and expressing it. So one student said at the end of the story, Dreamcatcher with the character Peter, he felt like at the end Peter was brave because he was able to get up in front of his class and share his culture. And then another student gave a thumbs down to say I disagree and I asked him why and he, and he very clearly said I disagree with him because I believe and then he articulated what he thought. In the end, he didn't really disagree with him. He just didn't like the fact that his classmate used the word brave. He wanted to use the word proud or something along those lines. So that gave me a very big glimmer of hope that that it's been a struggle, but we are on the right track. Um, so that was pretty much my Friday. Much better than last Friday. I'm feeling optimistic like we're making some progress. We still have a long way to go in some regards, but we're getting there. So I got to hurry up pack my belongings and leave because Liza's gonna be mad if I'm even a few minutes late and I still have to get home and let Genesis out. But I will be checking in with you guys later on this evening to go over Teachers Connect and wrap up the vlog. So I will talk to you guys later on. Hey guys, guess what time it is? It is actually 10.05. Um, I got home probably around nine o'clock so, or so, somewhere between nine o'clock and 9.30. I had a good time at happy hour with Liza and another friend of ours. And since we had a happy hour at a place in the mall, we went and did a little bit of shopping at Bath and Body Works. So, you know, I got home a little bit later. We lingered a little bit. So I came home, um, relaxed for a little bit, and then I checked on Teachers Connect to see what had been going on in the past week. I really only get to go on on Fridays because as I'm sure you guys know, the week is kind of busy. So um, one of the things that I found interesting about how Teachers Connect has changed since I started um, visiting the site is now it's actually a lot more involved with teachers just kind of reflecting on their week and their day. So there wasn't a ton of questions that um, I either saw that I could answer or felt equipped to answer, but there was one that I saw and immediately knew I would answer it because I think it's a problem that a lot of us deal with. 
There you go, sorry, I felt like the camera was doing something weird. So this question comes from someone named Carrie. And Carrie said, what do you do when a grade level teammate will not collaborate with you? She meets with us and acts like she's in agreement, but then will go off and do her own thing. So I know in um, messages that I've gotten from some of you over the past couple of years, I've been asked that question before. And um, I've never had that particular dynamic before at my previous school we I worked on a very strong team with my friend Liza and some couple other friends and we worked pretty well together and um, last year I was on a very small team but we both kind of just worked independently but there was none of that we were meeting together and then pretending like we were going to be doing the same thing and collaborating and then one of us didn't so even though we didn't necessarily collaborate on a regular basis that was kind of like a accepted agreement between the two of us so there was none of this feeling of like i'm thinking that my teammate and i are on the same page and we're not um and sometimes things just work out that way the dynamics of teams are just that way and as long as both in my case both individuals seem to be fine with it then I think that can be okay sometimes just you know depending on how things are arranged at your grade level but in this particular case it sounds like this person is coming to grade level meetings and giving the impression that they are on board and that they are going to be doing the same things as the rest of their team and then actually not doing doing that at all so I basically told her that at the end of the day, all she can really make sure she's doing is covering her responsibilities as a great level teammate. Or I don't know if she's like a teacher leader or a team lead, it doesn't really say. But if she is, just covering those responsibilities as a teammate or a team lead. So I said, if I were in this situation, um, I would just make sure that I can show that I, as either a teammate or a team lead, have made the effort, done what I needed to do to make all the members of my team feel like I'm collaborating with them or providing them with the materials that we've agreed upon. And I would do that by either electronically sending agendas to meetings that we are holding that kind of have specifics as to what we've discussed in relationship to planning, or if we're developing physical plans as a team, like sending those in an email attachment and I would copy myself just so that I have documentation that this is, this is exactly what's happening so that if for some reason that teammate, you know, went into administration and tried to give the impression that we weren't collaborating and that somehow it was due to my actions, I have documentation to show that no, I've actually made some efforts and um, kind of cover myself that way. But I remember a principal of mine telling me that you know people are adults and you really can't control what is happening in another person's classroom so there's only so much energy you want to devote to that i understand that it will be frustrating but why expend so much energy on something that you ultimately can't control or change so just make sure that you are doing your due diligence as a teammate or a team lead and make sure you can document that you are doing so and then you just kind of have to let that person do what they think is best for their class and their style as a teacher now to be honest with you the rest of the questions that were present i really can't answer them because they're either um in relationship to uh, an age group that i don't work with or have never worked with or um the posts that I've seen are just very reflective pieces about how a person's week is going. So um, I think it is nice definitely to kind of see how people are spending their week and how they're feeling as they, because some people are actually just going back to school just now and just kind of reflecting on that. But I think this question is good because it, it comes up quite a bit for people. Sometimes you are on a team and you work seamlessly together and everyone's on the same page, but then there's gonna be times where that's not always gonna be the case and what exactly do you do when you have a teammate that really isn't wanting to work with the rest of you so um i don't i don't know uh what else to say about that so just kind of do what you can be cordial be respectful but just know that you can't control an adult and then once you tell yourself that you kind of can set yourself free a little bit but honestly um that's it for me i'm so so sleepy 
that I am getting ready to go to bed. I'm surprised I'm actually up this late. I just need to lay down. I have a lot to do. Ooh. See what I mean? I have a lot to do over um, the weekend. I actually had to bring some work home and um, I don't have I don't even know what I was about to say. I have a lot to do over the weekend. I did have to bring some work home and I'm just super, super sleepy. So um, I'm gonna end it here. I'm happy to report that this week overall went really well. I definitely feel like there was some light at the end of the tunnel, that progress was made and all is going well. So I am going to wrap it up give you my little reminders of making sure you join Teachers Connect and share your experience um, as a teacher over the past couple of days on there. Answer some questions if you can, pose some questions if you need to. With that being said, the Teachers Connect check-in was a little short and sweet this week, but sometimes that's even better. Um, if you haven't joined Teachers Connect, of course, make sure you do so. Just a great space to interact with other educators out there and collaborate and get some great ideas. Um, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it so that more people are able to see it and it's shared out in the YouTube world. And um, that's it. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope your week was as positive and um, promising as mine. And I will be sure to talk to you guys on Monday for another week of teaching. Until then, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody.